Okay, so let's talk about that. There are five Resident Evil games in development, allegedly. Okay, this leaker claims that that's what's happening, right? Including Resident Evil 9. So I don't know. I haven't really followed the Resident Evil uh, world. I know that when the games come out, we kind of talk about them from seven to eight and stuff like that. Uh, they've gotten scarier and scarier. The remakes, you know, even more beautiful than than ever. But I don't play them anymore. I don't play scary games. So what's your take on on this in terms of development for Resident Evil and stuff? What do leakers do for us? Sure, are we finding that there may potentially be by Resident Evil games. Cool. But do we need to know that? What does it provide for us? I mean, not just us journalists. As journalists, oh, you have something new to write about. You want to be the first one to be able to like report on this. But really, what does it provide for us for, for leakers to come out with these things? Now, whether if they're getting it, if they're getting from a source, which this, I think the article does mention that this person is notorious for, you know, being pretty accurate with with their leaks okay that must mean like either a they're hacking or b they have a little snitch in these studios somewhere that either gets a few extra bucks here and there a studio snitch okay yeah a studio <laughs> snitch i don't i don't know i'm not saying that every studio does have it but like right. as gamers like how does it how does it benefit anybody other than the ones that are being super impatient like i guess for me and just even especially like well i felt that way before I definitely feel it way more now after watching that documentary because, you know, you have that first trailer that they wanted to put out to even announce that number two was coming out and he's putting it together. And one of his comments was, I really hope this doesn't get leaked. Yeah, because it kind of sucks to build up all of this stuff. And it's, it's pretty much like, you know, if you put together this really great, like, you know, birthday gift for somebody and all the plans and everything like that. And then your best friend goes and tells who you're making this surprise for about it. Like it takes away that that's that moment, that suspense. Um, and I I don't just kind of like like going into watching these showcases. I don't want to see the stuff that's linked. I don't I don't even want to know the stuff that the studio has approved to be said like, hey, we're going to be talking about this. I want to be surprised. I love that surprise element. So when it comes to these leaker claims, it doesn't even matter that it is for Capcom or whatever studios about these potential five games. It doesn't do anything for me. Okay. Like I, I think that's a great cool. question. Go ahead. Yeah, I just, I think, okay, that's cool, but you're, it's what value are you providing me? Like what, what are you getting out of it as a leaker? I don't know. Okay, so I'll answer this question. I don't know because I'm not a leaker, right? But I think that what it does for us, you know, if we think about it from a whistleblower perspective, it gives us information that we didn't have before. So whether you like whistleblowers or not, and this that conversation can get really dicey because it's like this person leaks all this information and then whatever the government whoever they are, they have to deal with the aftermath of that, whether it's a surveillance situation or any other thing that a whistleblower has done. Right. So there's that aspect of it. And I don't want to dwell too much on that because you, you know, the implications of it. Right. So, but I do want to talk about the interesting situation that Bungie had a few years ago with the Eververse XP and a data miner that reveal that the XP that we we're getting weren't benefiting the player as much as it was, it was benefiting Bungie themselves. So even with that, it forced Bungie to reevaluate the XP, you know, numbers and how it benefits to acquire certain items in the game. Now, had the data miner not do the math and the, the community do the math to show, well, hey, this is supposed to benefit us at this particular point. But according to, to the, these numbers, they're not adding up. What's up with that, Bungie? Right. And they had to correct that. So I think there are times where we see that it does benefit us as individuals who are the end users of these wonderful you know, games and stuff like that. But at other times, you you vilify, maybe warranted or not, the person that's releasing this information but they're at a for them it's at a cost because it can cost them their lives 
or even generations to come, depending on how much of that stuff is exposed and in what capacity is it company or government, right? So it becomes a whole different conversation as, as we, we, we think about that. So from the Bungie perspective, I think that the Eververse XP uh, data miner situation changed the course of how XP is accumulated for Bungie after that was revealed. So I think there, there are benefits of it with the leakers. Some of it, maybe it's just the satisfaction. I'm not a leaker, but maybe it's just the satisfaction that I can do this and you can't stop me. And there's this power thing that, you know, like even with the thing with Naughty Dog, they figured out the back door and they're probably wondering, well, who would leave a back door to such an amazing studio, such a, a, a well-recognized studio? Oh, I'm going to have some fun with this because I can. So there's the I can. And there we have seen some benefits, you know, through multiple games that information that has been leaked has given us either perspective or hope. And, and even this is another perspective that, you know, I can get vilified for. So I yield there. You yield there. <laughs> yeah. Well, in terms of the potential of five Resident Evil games that are in development right now, for me personally, it's kind of like, well, why do I care right now? It's in development. You don't have anything else to show. You have nothing that's super concrete, um, even if it is Resident Evil 9. I think as a fan, we kind of already assumed that they would be another Resident Evil. And we also kind of already can assume that there will be remakes of the other titles. So I guess it just doesn't feel as point Im important. Like, all right, well, cool. I mean, you didn't really fully confirm things that we already assumed was happening, regardless if they made an announcement or not. But at the same time, I just have a whole different outlook on it, especially seeing how you know, studios like Naughty Dog takes those things. And and, and no, no studio should ever take it lightly because there's so much work that goes behind the scenes there. And then to have it kind of spoiled, kind of like go back to my whole surprise birthday party thing there. Like, okay, well, you already know. Why am I doing this now? Happy birthday. <laughs> right. So, I mean, the person that's receiving it is still going to be stoked, but like some of that joy and that, you know, mystery was kind of taken away from them. Yeah, a hundred percent. So, so there's that. Okay. The other thing too, is when you think about potential things,